Hello everyone. My name is Alison Tarrant and I'm doing a video today from my tutoring centre which is called Applied Scholastics Wattle Grove. Now the reason why I'm doing this video is because some of the parents that already bring their children here wanted me to do a video so they could share with their family and friends the learning and study methods we use with their children and the reason why it is so effective. We've been operating now for over 22 years. We've tutored thousands and thousands of students and we tutor both children and adults. So we start children from as young as three or four and we've tutored adults right up until in their 70s. So, you know, we, we've been doing this for a long time. We predominantly teach English and maths, but we do cover all subjects. So there is one specific learning method that we use that underlies all the subjects. It's at, it's at the base of all the subjects that we teach, which is why when we do teach a subject, we do get excellent results. So if you want to know more about this and if you'd like to get a little bit more knowledge on learning and study, I invite you to keep watching. Hello again, and I'm glad you're still watching. So what I want to start with is what actually occurs when a brand new parent walks through the door and comes to our tutoring centre for help. They want help for their child. So obviously we all sit at a table and we ask the parent what they think the problem is, what subject that their child needs help with, and we try to get as much information as we can. If the child is willing to communicate and they're old enough, we obviously ask the child what they think the problem is and all that is written down. And the other thing that we do, which is of vital importance, is we do a thorough assessment. It takes a full hour. It is, uh, it is very lengthy, but we need to find out exactly what's wrong because what you don't want to do with anyone that you're tutoring you don't want to tutor them on something that they already know there is nothing worse it's just a terrible thing to do to any student to tutor them on something they already know so the assessment tells us exactly what is wrong and then I have to explain to the parent how we're going to help their child and I can sit there and say, this is an Applied Scholastic Centre and all Applied Scholastic Centres worldwide use the study methods developed by L. Ron Hubbard and we cover things like the misunderstood word and symbol, lack of mass and 2C per gradient. Now, if I say that to the parent, it literally goes in one ear and out the other. It's not that they're not wanting to know what we are going to do with their child to help them. It's not that. It's just that when you're talking about a study method, you can't just say it. You, you have to show them how it works. And so what we do is we, we ask them if we, can, if we can do a little activity and see if they're okay with that. And I've never had one parent that's ever said, no, I don't want to do a little activity. And this is what we actually do with them. So the first thing I ask them is a question like this. Like there's, there's many questions I ask them, but these are, these are a few I've used in the past. So one of the things that I have asked is, from what situation would you abscond? Okay, that's one question I ask. And the next question is, would the plane be verdant in a drought? It's another question. And then I ask them to draw something uh, mathematical and I might say, draw me a perpendicular line. Now, after we go over these three things, I have all sorts of things happen with the parent. Some parents know what all of them mean, but most don't. There'll be, there'll be something in here that they don't understand. So 
when, for an example, when they don't understand, draw me a perpendicular line and, and they they literally do this. So they'll, they'll go, oh, I'll just draw a line or or they'll draw parallel lines. But, but they'll do something with a line because it does say the word line, okay? And usually this one here, they just have no idea and they can't answer. And this one here, uh, some know the answer to this and some don't. But the next thing I ask them is, which is a very important question, um, why couldn't you draw a perpendicular line? And usually their reply is, well, I didn't really know what perpendicular meant, which is true. Like this word here, they just didn't know what the word meant. And also when I ask them about this question and they can't answer it, I say, well, what's the problem? And they say, some say, oh, I'm just not sure. I'm just not sure. And then I say, well, are you not sure about the whole question? Or is there a word in the question that you're not sure about? And when you're looking at things that you don't understand, it gets very confusing for adults, not just for children, for adults. So what I do, and I'm going to come back to this, I'm going to tell you what all these words mean, and but then what I do is I go over to here. I say to the parent, I say to the parent, now imagine your child is at school and they have a test paper and on the test paper they're being asked all of these things. Not much different to you being asked all these things because I'm trying to make a comparison between the child and the parent in, in the misunderstanding part of it. So then I say to the parent, what if your child has to do a test and the test says, what is the quotient for 24 and 4? And the child writes an answer of 20. And then the other question that they have on the test is draw a line of symmetry on each shape below. And then the child will do this. They'll draw a line there. They might draw a line there because they're having fun drawing a line. And they might draw a line here. Now, the reason why the child can't do this activity is no different to the reason why the parent can't do, can't answer these questions. And what I'm trying to get through to the parent is what is happening with their child in school. And then from that, once, once the parent can honestly see the comparison and what is going on with their child at school, it's then I go over our study method and what we do. So when I was saying it before, I was saying all applied scholastic centres use the study technology and materials based on the works of R. Ron Hubbard. And the first thing that I said was a misunderstood word and symbol. So what we are trying to do here, we are trying to make children aware that when they are when that when they are reading things and they just can't understand something, they had better start looking for that misunderstood word. That is the one thing we do here at this centre that we, we do it with all the subjects. It's the first thing that we do. It's underlying all of our teaching. You can teach a child arithmetic all you like. You can teach them fractions all you like. But if they don't know the key words for that subject, they are going to make errors in their tests. If you look at this here, this word here is such a misunderstood word. Like so many children don't know that word and so many children make mistakes. So what I'm going to do now is I will cover uh, each each question here on both sides so we can clear up the misunderstandings. 
So let's look at the first word in this question, abscond. Some of the viewers watching now, you'll either know what it means or, or you won't, but I actually wrote it down from the dictionary because I didn't want to get it, I didn't want to get the actual definition wrong. So when you abscond, you leave in a hurry, especially to escape the law. So once the parent knows what this word was, then they start, then, then they do this and go, oh, okay, well, I can answer that now. And they might say, well, if a robber was broke into a jewellery shop and they're stealing jewellery and they hear the sirens from a police car, they're going to abscond. And that's correct because they're going to leave in a hurry, especially to escape the law because they don't want to go to jail. Okay, now the second one, would the plane be verdant in a drought? Now, I actually ask them this question because I'm thinking that they don't know what this word verdant means. So what verdant actually is, is if something's verdant, it's covered with green plants. That's what it actually means. And a plane... To put it simply, a plane's just like a big flat piece of ground. So, and a drought obviously is when, you know, there hasn't been rain for months and months and months and everything's dying. So, but when I ask this question, I assume that they don't know what that means, but some of the, some of the people, some of the parents I meet don't, don't actually know what this means. They, they, they look at this word and they think it means aeroplane because I have a lot of English as a second language students that come here. So some of the parents that are the adult parents who come here, they really don't know their English very well either. So they think that this is an aeroplane and so they don't understand the connection with any, any of this. So it's a big misunderstanding to them. And the last thing here is a perpendicular line just need to rub this out. A perpendicular line. So say if you draw a line, it's any line you draw with another line that shows a 90 degree angle. That's how you know it's perpendicular. This line is perpendicular to that line and that line is perpendicular to that line. But if you don't know what this word means, perpendicular, you really can't draw the line. You're going to draw any line, but you won't draw a perpendicular line. And if you do draw a perpendicular line and you're just guessing, you'll just get it right by luck, just because you're guessing. So now I want to move over to this here. If a child doesn't know what quotient is, they'll either guess it or they'll think they know what it is. They'll, they'll just think that they know. Most children that see this word, and this word is in tests, by the way. Quotient is in tests. And most of them think it just means takeaway. So they think it means 24 takeaway 4 is 20. That's what they think it means. But what this word actually means is the result that you get when you divide two numbers. So what they should be doing with this is they should be going 24 divided by 4 is equal to a quotient of 6. Do you see how not knowing what this word is completely, it, it, it's just completely makes you misunderstand the question and you get the answer wrong. Now, I picked the last example here. Because this happened to my son in year two and the teacher said he was being really naughty and he was mucking up and he didn't know what to do and the sheet that he did, he, he was just, he started doing things like this because guess what? He didn't know what this word was. He had no idea. But he did see draw a line, you see, so... He didn't know what that word was. He couldn't follow the instructions very well. So what happened was is when he came home and the worksheet was all wrong, 
I learnt this word with him and if you draw a line of symmetry, you're drawing a line through an object so you have an equal amount either side. So to draw a line of symmetry through the rectangle, you could either do it like that or like that or like that. So do you see how... Now, this is just one study method that we use. It's just one of them. There's the other two that I mentioned earlier. But I just wanted um, to do a video on this. So, so the parents that requested this video, they can then show their family and friends and really start to pinpoint, especially in the worksheets that come home from school, your children are coming home with all of these worksheets from school that are just, they have misunderstood words everywhere in the worksheet instructions. And it's no wonder they hate to do their homework and they just can't do the worksheets. And it's happening at school as well. Now, the only thing that you can do is teach them a study method where they're going to learn how to learn the words. They're going to be able to sit down and study and actually identify what the problem is because most of the children that are very young too, they sit in class and they can't do something and they just feel terrible. They don't even know what's wrong, you know, but you can even teach this to a young child and they'll understand we have young children that come here in years one and two and we've taught them this method and they are forever now looking for words that they don't know. And it, it makes them really smart. I have to admit, it just does. So, so I think I've covered everything I've wanted to cover. Um, I hope this helps. I know a lot, of, a lot of you watching this will never be able to come to my centre, but if you do want to learn the learning method, we do have a correspondence course for this. Uh, the book is called Learning How to Learn. I'll just put a picture here somewhere on the page. I'll, I'll put it somewhere while you're watching. And, yes, you can always um, reply to me at the link below. I'll leave a link below so you know where to reply. I'll leave my website link. And... I hope this has helped. It is a very important subject. We, the, the, the children that come here, this is why they improve. We can teach them English and math, sure, but it's the words in their studies and the words in the things that they're trying to learn that ruins them. It's, they have no solution. You either know what this word means or you don't. You either know what this word means or you don't. And if you don't know what these words mean, you're not going to be able to answer that question and get it right. It's just impossible. It doesn't matter who you are. 